Hello everyone, welcome to Nursing Essentials. In today's video, we're going to do a quick review of basic oxygen delivery systems. There was actually a question on our community tab about this. Um, this is a question right here. So if you haven't, um, if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on questions like this. So before we get started, let's define um, the fraction of inspired oxygen or FiO2 which is the fraction of inspired oxygen by volume in the inspired air. In plain words, the amount of oxygen that goes into the lungs when you inhale air. Remember that the air that goes into your lungs when you inhale is not 100% oxygen. We have other gases in there as well. Actually, normally, the amount of oxygen in the inspired air is approximately 21% and you have other gases in there as well such as carbon dioxide and nitrogen. So normally 21 to 22% is the amount of oxygen in the inspired air. That being said, let's jump right into the oxygen delivery systems and first we have the nasal cannula. This is a basic oxygen delivery system that consists of two nasal prongs. Now the FiO2 delivered with the nasal cannula goes from 24 up to 40% and you can use an oxygen flow rate that goes from 1 up to 6 liters per minute. Now the clinical applications for the nasal cannula, uh, this is going to be pretty much a, a low oxygen saturation system that can be used in patients who are not critically ill. Again, to be used in patients who are not critically ill. This is what you would probably see in your uh, textbook. Uh, this is what the system actually looks like. You see the oxygen source at the bottom there. And you have the nasal prongs that go into, um, into the nares. This is going to be the correct placement of the nasal cannula. And these are the nasal prongs, as you can see in the picture. Make sure that those um, are located inside of the nares or inside the nose of the client. Some special considerations to keep in mind with the nasal cannula. It can be easily tolerated, which is a good thing. Uh, it can dislodge easily. It doesn't get in the way of eating or talking. You can provide an effective oxygen concentration with this system, and it allows a client to breathe through the nose or mouth. You have to ensure that the prongs are in the nares with the opening face in the client. Make sure you assess nasal mucosa for irritation from the drying effect of higher flow oxygen rates. Um, make sure you assess the skin integrity as a tubing as well can irritate the skin. And you can add humidification as prescribed um, and check the wider levels if this is the case. Now this last four considerations are more likely to show in your exam so make sure that you keep those in mind. Over the next couple of slides we're going to go over the face mask and uh, we will be touching on the simple oxygen face mask. We're going to talk about the Venturi mask and the non-rebreather, okay? Uh, so now the question is, why choose a face mask? Who needs a face mask and why not a uh, nasal cannula? Well, if the patient requires a higher fraction of inspired oxygen than the basic cannula can provide, for example, if you need to provide a, an FiO2 of uh, greater than 40%, then you would use a face mask. If the nasal cannula is contraindicated in the case of nasal blockage or facial injury, then you would go with a face mask. If you need to provide a consistent uh, fraction of inspired oxygen, for example, if you need to prevent the oxygen-induced hypercapnia and COPD, then you would definitely go with a face mask. Uh, let's, let's review the simple face mask. Uh, this is a plastic face mask that is going to cover the nose and mouth, and it allows for oxygen to enter directly through a port at the bottom of the mask. This is what the mask looks like. You can see that picture to your left here. The holes in the side of the mask allow for exhalation. These are not one-way valves, okay? Uh, as you can see, there is no external reservoir bag, and the fraction of inspired oxygen that can be delivered with a simple face mask goes from 30% up to 60%. And you can use an oxygen flow rate that goes from five up to 10 liters per minute. This is what you probably would see on your textbook. This is what the simple face mask looks like. You have the face mask covering nose and mouth. You can see the oxygen source at the front there. Um, a strap on the side to keep the mask in place and the metal piece at the top of the nose uh, to keep the mask in place. 
some special considerations with the simple face mask. It does interfere with eating and talking. It can be warm and confining. And you have to ensure that the mask fits securely over nose and mouth. Uh, whenever you can, make sure that you remove saliva and mucus from the mask, okay? Provide skin care to the area covered by the mask. Very important. Uh, provide emotional support uh, to decrease anxiety in the client who feels claustrophobic and make sure that you monitor for risk of aspiration from inability of the client to clear the mouth in the case, for example, if vomiting occurs. Remember your ABCs. Keep that airway always clear. Now, these last three considerations are more likely to show up on your exam, so make sure that you keep those in mind. Next, we have the Venturi mask. So the Venturi mask is an oxygen delivery system that consists of a face mask, a jet nozzle, and some changeable ports, as you can see in the picture here to your right. This type of system uses a room air entrainment to deliver a fixed fraction of inspired oxygen. The FiO2 that can be delivered goes up to 60%, and you can do so in increments ranging from 24% up to all the way up to 60%. And with the Venturi mask, you can use an oxygen flow rate that goes from 4 all the way up to 10 liters per minute. Again, we see an increment here as compared to the nasal cannula. This is probably what you would see on your textbook, as you can see here. Um, you have the strap on the side. It looks uh, very much like the simple face mask, but you have air and treatment ports at the front here. There's going to be a mixture of 100% oxygen and room air. You have the removable adapter at the bottom there to choose the amount of oxygen that you uh, want to deliver. Remember, you're going to be delivering a fixed amount of FiO2. Some important considerations to keep in mind with the Venturi mask. Make sure that you keep the air entrapment port for the adapter open and uncovered to ensure adequate oxygen delivery. Uh, make sure that you keep the mask snug on the face and ensure the tubing is free of any kinks because the FiO2 can actually be altered if kinking occurs or if the mask does not fit well. Make sure that you assess the nasal mucosa for irritation. Humidity or aerosol can be added to the system as needed. These three considerations are likely to show up in your exam, so make sure you keep them in mind. Next, we have the non-rebreather mask. Uh, this is a plastic mask that covers the face and mouth, and there is a reservoir bag that should be pre-filled with oxygen. You have one-way valves on both sides uh, that actually prevent the rebreathing of expired CO2, hence the name non-rebreather mask. Um, you can see what the mask looks like on the picture to your left. Now the FiO2 that can be delivered with this mask is going to go from 60 all the way up to 100%. We see an increment here compared to the other systems. And you can use oxygen flow rates that go from 10 to 15 liters per minute. Again, we also see an increment here compared to the other systems. The clinical application for the non-rebreather mask is going to be the first line treatment for conditions with high oxygen requirements, for example, in critically ill patients. This is what you would probably see on your textbook. As you can see, you have the reservoir bag and you have the you have the one-way ports on the side of the mask, hence the name again, non-rebreather mask. Some important nursing considerations with the non-rebreather mask. Uh, make sure that you adjust the flow rate to keep the reservoir bag inflated. Make sure that the mask is snug on the face and make sure that you remove mucus and saliva from the mask. Uh, provide emotional support to decrease anxiety in the client who feels claustrophobic. Ensure that the valves and flaps are intact and functional during each breath. That is, the valves should open during expiration and close during the inhalation. This is a non-rebreather mask, remember that. Make sure that the reservoir back does not twist or kink or that the oxygen source does not disconnect. Otherwise, the client will suffocate. Now. These last two considerations are most likely to show up on your exam, so make sure that when we talk about non-rebreather mask, you keep this in mind. Lastly, we have the nebulizer, which is a device that consists of a mask or mouthpiece, a medication reservoir, and tubing that is attached to either an air compressor or oxygen. Now, this is what the system actually looks like. You can see it in the picture to your right. 
It allows for administration of aerosolized medication, such as bronchodilators or racemic epinephrine. As a quick review, which basic oxygen delivery system can provide 100% fraction of inspired oxygen? If you said the non-rebreather mask, then you'd be correct. Which basic oxygen delivery system would provide a fixed fraction of inspired oxygen? If you said Venturi mask, then you'd be correct. Again, everyone, thank you for watching this video. If you learned something, make sure that you hit the thumbs up. If you have a question, make sure that you leave it in a comment below. That's it for now. I'll see you on the next video.